So I've hiked Mount Olympus one time about 10 years ago and I can describe it shortly as the Stairmaster from Hell, hot but extremely beautiful and well worth it. Well I grew up right under Mount Olympus and when I was a little kid every summer we couldn't wait until we could run through the sprinklers but every summer my mom would say you can't run through the sprinklers until the snow is off Mount Olympus. The discourse about uh, uh, climbing or the ascent to uh, Mount Olympus, of course, um, one of the rewards is you do get able to converse with the gods because you're closer to them up there, things like that. And um, depending on the uh, trials and comfort of your ascent, everything like that, you can uh, uh, praise uh, certain gods and condemn others, uh, depending on uh, how rewarding the. Uh, uh, you want to uh, uh, label the, uh, the entire experience. You have a half a century climbing Mount Olympus, you know. Oh, geez, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ann Penman Morgan. I grew up a native in Salt Lake City, and we lived in a neighborhood near Highland High School where we had an excellent view of Mount Olympus. We were on the end of a dead-end street, and this was the view outside our window. My dad wanted to have my grandmother paint it for him, her name is Beverly Penman, the artist. Tell us your latest, your the last time you climbed Mount Olympus and uh, and what number you're on now. I know you don't like to talk about it, but I'm gonna coax oh, it out of you. <laughs> I don't even, uh, I, I think I showed that journal to you, but uh -huh. uh, I don't know, 400 something. Okay. But remember, that was uh, nearly 60 years ago that I first uh, went up there, so it, it really, uh, is it that they accumulate over the years. Dad uh, turned on the news and sat down in his chair and just in time to hear the newscaster say that they were going to send a helicopter up to rescue the stranded hikers on Mount Olympus. And he jumped out of his chair and, and uh, called the county sheriff's department and said, oh, you don't, don't, don't worry about the fire on Mount Olympus. That's a, my son, I asked him to signal me to let me know he's okay and they're okay. And there was this dead silence on the other end of the phone. And the guy says, Mr. Rasmussen, that was a pretty stupid idea, wasn't it? <laughs> and Dad said, yeah, I guess it was a pretty stupid idea. I grew up um, just below Mount Olympus. I grew up in Holiday, Utah. And I have always kind of thought of Mount Olympus as just this really pretty place. I never felt the desire to climb it or anything. So the one time that I did try to climb it, I made it about halfway and then lost all my motivation and turned around because it's really hard climb. But my brother always had this really strong connection to Mount Olympus. We grew up right next to it and he probably climbed it for the first time when he was a teenager. And then now he's married and, and his wife and he have a really strong connection to Mount Olympus. And every summer for their anniversary in the middle of the heat in June, they climb to the top to mark their anniversary. So right now I think I'm behind Mount Olympus looking over into I'm not sure where. So I know one of these days I will find Neff's Canyon Cave. It's no longer the deepest cave in North America that's been taken away for a long time. I know you can't get in it. It's locked up but apparently it's an unattractive, steep and dangerous cave so in terms of destination, it's maybe more of just a personal milestone rather than a tourist destination, a place I want to see. So uh, that's my story for now. So hi from farther than I thought I would go today, from the back of Mount Olympus. So uh, hope the water holds out.
My name is Doug Lechemonot. My father, Victor Lechemonot, who passed away about a decade ago, uh, was an accomplished local artist. And he grew up in the Salt Lake Valley, and Mount Olympus was a focal point of sorts of his life. Uh, he looked up to Mount Olympus uh, as, a, as a kid, and uh, over the years he ended up uh, painting Mount Olympus in oils and pastels. And uh, this particular work uh, he painted uh, in 1971. And he, uh, he lived uh, on Mount Olympus and uh, raised a family there. And uh, this for our family is as good a symbol of uh, my father's artwork that uh, exists. It's an interesting height because there are times when you can do it very quickly. My first trip up there took me three hours. And now when I go, I was probably about seven. And I've had a couple of friends who are joggers who've jogged up Mount Olympus. And I never ever could understand that named Robert Mitchell. He used to jog up Mount Olympus before he went to work each morning. He'd start about five in the morning, he'd run up to the top, and then he'd run back down, and then he'd put on his coat and tie and go to work. <laughs> and I never could understand how he could do that. But he was tough. There was a flat top rock, and I um, just, without even thinking, got up on top of it and was in for one of the greatest astonishments of my hiking career on top was a um, fully coiled, fully rattling rattlesnake. Amazingly enough, I got out of striking distance without being encumbered by the writhing body of this monstrous snake. I had a, a construction foreman who Later pointed out to me that June is rattlesnake month. I'm so sorry about our members because is uh, uh, is we got some accidents. The seven hikers, part of the Korean Wasatch Mountaineering Club, had hiked up to Mount Olympus on Saturday, but on the way back down, they somehow ended up east of the trail. As they came down one by one, they just uh, this it was so steep that they lost their footing. Three of the hikers slid up to a hundred feet right between the two mountain summits. They fall, so most first we take care of them. The rest of the hikers made their way down the mountain to help. After rescuers got the news, a helicopter dropped off six volunteer searchers who had to rappel 600 feet in the dark to reach the victims. The rescue, rescue team bring a warm stuff with the sleeping bags, and then they just keep us warm. I think they're pretty comfortable. We got them in, I think, eight sleeping bags, got them piled up. Uh, got their injuries taken care of or stabilized. After the first three victims hiked out, a life flight helicopter flew out the last four one by one. The helicopter would drop a person and sometimes gear onto the mountain. You can see how dangerous it was. That person would then help hook up the victims before they were flown across the sky back to safety. I always love going up there. I don't think I've ever missed a year that I didn't, that I didn't uh, go up there. It's like visiting an old friend. Overture by Marilyn Johnson. Darkness cloaks Oregon grape creeping across verdant soil. Choke cherry and wild plum bloom dimly in the forest. Perched on dead branches of scrub oak, robins and towhees practice their morning scales, coaxing the sun to appear. Louder and louder they cry, waiting for the first slanted warmth to spill over Mount Olympus. The toccata and fugue begins. Notes pause and plunge, hitting the ground. They bounce, only to be caught and sung again. Soon others join the songburst. Chickadees coo, doves chortle, blue jays bray, and pheasants crow like Chanticleer. I've been up Mount Olympus lots of different times. Uh, I grew up went to Olympus High School and, and it's just an important part of my life. Uh, I've seen rattlesnakes on the trail. I remember taking a bunch of Boy Scouts up to the top and sleeping on, up there on the trail because they were too tired to get to the top. Another time uh, was up there uh, and slept when there was a full moon and with the lights in the city it was so bright on top of the mountain that you could see all the colors in the shadows uh, because you were above the city. 
Uh, it's a great thing.